The author says, may Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. Daruriyatul irtiqad. The necessities of the conviction. Daruriyat, that's plural. Plural of daruriyah. Daruriyah. Uh, Daruriyah, that's feminine of Daruri. So Daruri means necessary, indispensable. That's masculine. Then feminize it. Daruriyah, necessary, indispensable, but feminine. Then pluralize it. Daruriyat, necessaries, indispensables of the creed. ضروريَّاتُ الاعتقاد الشرح the explanation أن هذا بيان ضروريات الاعتقاد is that this is clarification of the necessities of the conviction the necessary matters of the conviction a meaning يذكر هنا ما يلزم ويجب اعتقاده على المكلف Meaning, mentioned here is what is binding on and obligatory on, uh, obligatory to have as a conviction on the accountable one. Well, ضروريات جمعو ضروري. And ضروريات is the plural of ضروري here. Sheikh didn't say ضرورية. So if you want to ask about that, you can ask about that. How did this feminine plural here, Alif and Ta, come from the masculine there without ta marbuta i don't know although it is possible to get a feminine plural from a masculine word like empty hand test empty hand at with alif and ta but this one has ya on it the ya baruri so i don't know about what happened there فالشيء الذي لا يستغنى عنه يقال له ضروري. Thus, something which is indispensable is called ضروري, necessary. ويقال أيضا الضروري الشيء الذي يفهم بلا تفكر. And also, the word ضروري is used for something that's understood without thinking. That's the original meaning there. Well, both of those are original meanings. The daruri is what's indispensable. That's meaning in the language. And daruri also means what's understood without thinking. That's a meaning in the language. So it means intuitive or granted. كَكَوْنِ الْوَاحِدِ نِصْفَ الْإِثْنَيْنِ Like for one, like, like one being half of two. That's ضروري. Understood without thinking. وَكَوْنِ النَّارِ And like fire being hot. كَمَا يُطْلَقُ عَلَى عِلْمِ كَوْنِ شُرْبِ الْخَمْرِ وَالثَّرِيقَةِ حَرَامًا Just like the word ضروري is used for knowing that drinking wine and thievery is forbidden. That's the ضروري in religious sense. كما يطلق على علم كون شرب الخمر والسريقة حراما That's in a religious sense, not in a linguistic sense. Sheikh, I didn't get the last word. Uh, you said just like the word ضروري is used for knowing that drinking wine and, and thievery. Thievery? Thievery, stealing. Oh, okay, okay. Is forbidden. That's religious meaning of ضروري though. Because those religious judgments have evidence. So by the fact that they have evidence, that means you won't get to them without their evidence. You won't arrive at those judgments without their evidence. 
So from that perspective of them having an evidence that you can't arrive at them without that evidence, then from the original meaning of Baruri, they're not Baruri. Because Baruri is what's indispensable and granted. That's not granted if it has an evidence that you can't get to it without that evidence. But in a religious sense, it's granted, meaning that it's common knowledge. So that any Muslim knows that drinking wine is haram and stealing is haram. Even if he doesn't know the proof, he knows the judgment. وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكَ مِمَّا يَشْتَرِكُ فِي مَعْرِفَتِهِ الْعَوَامُ الْعَوَامُ وَالْخَوَاسُ وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكَ مِمَّا يَشْتَرِكُ فِي مَعْرِفَتِهِ الْعَوَامُ وَالْخَوَاسُ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Just like anything else that the commoners and the elites amongst the Muslims know it. They share in knowing it. It's not special to the scholars. And it's not special to the people of knowledge, including the students of knowledge. So, uh, who's the commoner? Al Awam, the commoners or the laymen, and Al Khawas the elites or the special ones amongst the Muslims, who are those? So the commoners, those for sure are the people who are not people of knowledge. You could call them al-juhal, the ignorant ones. And the khawas, for sure, that's the scholars. But there's someone, there's somewhere, something in between these here. The students of knowledge, where do they fall? Then it depends on how you word it or how you define it. So you could say al awam wal khawas, and you could say al alim wal jahil, the knowledgeable and the ignorant. ثم علم التوحيد هو أساس قواعد عقائد الإسلام. Furthermore, the knowledge of the monotheism, capital M, it is the base of the rules of the convictions of Islam. وهو أشرف العلوم, and it is the noblest of sciences. وغايته الفوز بالسعادات الدينية والدنيوية. And the goal of this noblest science is success. Religious and worldly success, bisa'adat. Yeah, this word, uh, I don't have an explanation for that. Sa'adat, the word sa'adat means happinesses. But I don't have very particular or more clear uh, tafsir for that word here in this context. وَغَايَتُهُ الْفَوْزُ بِالسَّعَادَاتِ الدِّينِيَةِ وَالدُّنْيَوِيَةِ The goal of this most noblest of sciences, the science of the creed, is the success, the religious success and the worldly success. وَبَرَاهِينُهُ الْحُجَجُ الْقَطْعِيَةِ And its proofs, the proofs of this science, يعني, the source, the proofs of this science are الْحُجَجُ الْقَطْعِيَةِ The definitive arguments, the indisputable arguments, the invincible Invincible arguments mean samiyatin wa aqliyah whether they were confirmed religious documents, so they're not disputable, or they were definitive intellectual arguments. Wa yusamma hadha al-ilmu ilm al-tawheed. And this science is called the science of monotheism. 
or the monotheism. Or ilma usuli din and the knowledge of the basics of the religion or the fundamentals of the religion, because it's the base, the belief. What a calamity that some people, they don't have the belief and they learned Arabic, they learn how to pray, they learned I don't know what. And they wear all the religious clothing and they do all the sunnas, the sunan, and their aqidah is minimal if there's anything there. So those are the ones who have walls and a ceiling and they don't have a floor. And this science is also called the knowledge of kalam, which is here theological rhetoric. Theological rhetoric. That's how we talk about our religion and argue for our beliefs. Our argumentation for our beliefs, that's part of the science of belief. You have to learn those arguments. You have to learn the topics and then the proofs also. Don't go off on a limb there on your own. Rather, you want to learn that knowledge that was passed on. So what's the science of the creed? Muslims have the science of the creed for centuries, passing it down, not making up something and adding something to it. Passing it on. Receiving it and passing it on. Receiving it and passing it on. Just like you got it. This science of creed, it has in it topics. Like any science has topics. You want to talk about grammar? Grammar has topics. You want to talk about math? Math has topics. It's not like any topic goes in there. So this science of the creed has topics. So then, you know, chapters. So you need to know what are the topics of this science. And then... Those topics, they all have their proofs, their references, and their arguments. And that's ilmul kalam, investigating those proofs and arguments. Qal al muallifu rahimahullah said the author, may Allah have mercy upon him. Fasl, section, yajibu ala kaf. Obligatory upon all of the accountable ones is entering into the religion of Islam. As if they weren't Muslims already, of course. And firmness, steadfast, steadfastness upon it or in it, in the religion, constantly. And adherence to what is binding on one of religious rules. The explanation. أن المكلف هو البالغ العاقل الذي بلغت دعوة الإسلام. Is that the accountable one is the pubescent sane one whom the call of Islam reached him? A. Man balagahu anna hu la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. Meaning, the one whom it reached that there is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. وَكَانَ samri, And this one has sound hearing. لَمْ يَكُنْ asam, Not deaf. Meaning he heard it. فَهَذَا هُوَ الْمُكَلَّفُ الَّذِي هُوَ مُلْزَمٌ بِأَنْ يُسْلِمْ This one is the accountable one that it's binding on him to embrace Islam. It's also valid if he read it, though. If he read that, that's valid, too. And it's a condition that the person understands its meaning. And we say he has to understand its meaning. It doesn't mean he has to understand its details and all of its implications and its proofs, as we're going to say. But he has to just understand its basic meaning. Meaning, 
when you say no one is God but Allah, so he understands that that means there's God, and this God, his name is Allah, and no one is God but him. And Muhammadur Rasulullah, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, the person understands that this means. And Muhammad, a man named Muhammad, is the messenger of this only God. So if a person understands that, he's accountable. But not that he understands from the word Muhammad another person, like Elijah Muhammad. No. Not that. He won't be accountable then. Then he doesn't understand the meaning of shahada. That's what we learned. This one is the accountable one uh, who's bound to embrace Islam. And he's bound to apply, to practice the sacred law of Islam. Meaning that he fulfills the obligations and refrains from the prohibitions. Concerning though whoever died before puberty, then there shall not be upon him any responsibility in the afterlife. So these two words here, Mas'uliya and the word taklif is it here? Not in the form of the word taklif. Yani, we said mukallaf, accountable. So the mukallaf is the mas'ul, the responsible, the questioned one. Mas'ul means questioned, responsible. That doesn't doesn't the word response mean answer? Yes, it does. So the mas'ul is the responsible one, the one who is to be questioned. That means the mukallaf, the accountable one. So the one who dies before puberty shall not have any mas'uliya, any responsibility, meaning accountability in the afterlife. وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ جُنَّ قَبْلَ الْبُلُوغُ And likewise, anyone who went insane before puberty, and then his insanity continued into puberty without interruption. Continued in uninterrupted into puberty. Famat and then died. And then he died. Famata and then he died while insane. This one then is not accountable. And likewise, the one who did live into puberty, however, the call of Islam did not reach him. A aslu da'wa, meaning the base, the fundamental of the call, which is the shahada, the meaning of the shahada. وَلَيْسَ شَرْطًا لِبُلُوغِ أَنْ تَبْلُوغَهُ تَفَاصِيلُ عَقَائِدِ الْإِسْلَامِ بِأَدِلَّتِهَا عَقَائِدِ الْإِسْلَامِ بِأَدِلَّتِهَا And it's not a condition for considering that the call has reached one that the convictions, the Islamic convictions in detail with their proofs reached that one. بَلْ يَكُونُ مُكَلَّفًا بِمُجَرَّدِ أَنْ يَبْلُغَهُ أَصْلُ الدَّعْوَةِ Rather, one would be accountable by the mere uh, base of the call reaching him. So then you're going to advise the one who's reluctant to become a Muslim, claiming he wants to study first. Don't tell him, yes, study first. Don't tell him that. He has to become Muslim immediately. He's accountable. If he dies accountable, he'll be in hell forever. So don't tell him yes. Delay yourself and study and research and make sure that's what you want to do. Tell him become a Muslim and then study. Or something like that. 
ولا يكون له عذرا انه لم يكن فكر في حقيقه الاسلام برهه من الزمن and it will not be an excuse for him that he doesn't think about the reality of islam and the truth of islam for some time that's not an excuse for him لأن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم ما كان يمهل الكفار برهة من الزمن because the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم did not use to delay the blasphemers for some time ليفكروا بعد أن يبلغهم دعوة الإسلام so that they could think after he conveyed to them the call of Islam في حقيتها يوما ولا يومين ولا أكثر من ذلك. He didn't give them time to think about that for a day, nor two days, nor more than that. بل كان يعتبر ذلك كافيا كافيا في انتفاء العذر عنهم. Rather, the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم considered that minimal deliverance sufficient. for removing their excuse yani for lifting the lack of accountability from them illam yattabi'u al-islam if they didn't follow islam meaning the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam he didn't consider it uh, an excuse that for someone to say okay well give me some time to think about whether this is something i should do or not do And really, yani, maybe if you're new to the knowledge, if someone's new to the knowledge, maybe that might seem strange. But if you understand, then it's not strange at all because he doesn't, yani, we're talking about being in hell forever. It's not something, there's no, there's no uh, grace period here where he says, okay, let me think to make sure. Because it is the truth, it's, it's the truth, al-Islam. So once he becomes accountable, or once the da'wah reaches him, He doesn't have an option to think about it and then say, okay, now I'm ready, because he has to be ready. Yani, just for the fact that he's not allowed to, de- to deny it or refuse it, if he's not allowed to refuse it under any circumstance, then that means he's not allowed to delay it. وَكَانَ يَكْتَفِي بِأَنْ يُسْمِعَ الْعَرَبَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي الْمَوْسِمِ And... The Prophet والسلام, used to suffice with making the pagan Arabs hear the basic call during the Hajj season, a mawsim al Hajji wa ghayrihi, and during other seasons or other times, hina yajtamiruna min nawahin shatta, whenever they would gather from the various regions, they used to come to the Haram. And he used to come to Mecca, come to the Kaaba. Because the Arabs, they remembered some of what Abraham taught them, Abraham and Ishmael. So they, they used to come to the Kaaba, claiming to make Hajj. Yani, the case of those old Arabs is like the case of the Jews and the Christians. Which is that they were upon Islam, and then they deviated. Just like the Jews were upon Islam, originally their ancestors. Then they deviated. Same thing for the Christians. And the Christians went so far as to worship Jesus and worship his mother, some of them, and to make partners for Allah, say there's a trinity, etc. And they would say, wouldn't those Christians, one of them say, we believe in one God. There is God, and then, but still he believes in making partners for Allah. So that's how the pagan Arabs were. They would say, we believe that there's one God. There is one God. Allah, he is the God. The God. But they used to worship with him idols also. And then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, and Allah gave him control over the Arabs, and he turned the uh, paganism Yani, he eradicated the paganism in the Arabian Peninsula. Hina yajitami'una min nawahin shatta 
أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So whenever those Arabs used to gather from the various regions, he used to make them hear, No one is God but Allah, وَأَنَّهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And that he is the messenger of Allah. كَانَ يَمُرُّ فِيهِمْ مُرُورًا He used to pass by them, simply. He used to pass by them a passing. ثُمَّ لَمَّا جَاءَ الْإِذْنُ بِالْقِتَالِ And then, when the permission to fight came, كَانَ يُحَارِبُ كُلَّ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ مُحَارَبَتَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ أُولَائِكَ الَّذِينَ بَلَّغَهُمْ بَعْدَ تَجْدِيدِ الدَّعْوَةِ أَوْ مِنْ غَيْرِ تَجْدِيدِ Then, when the permission to fight came, because the Muslims used to not be allowed to fight, when they were in Mecca and they were weak, they had to refrain from fighting and be patient with the persecution until they got to Medina and then they got the permission to fight and then they gave the kuffar a whipping that they never thought that they would get. When the permission to fight did come, the Prophet wasallam he used to wage war against everyone he was able to, from all of those who to whom he delivered the message. Sometimes he would renew the call, and sometimes he would not renew the call. Yani considered it sufficient that he already delivered the message to them. Illa man badat lahu maslahatun fi fi musalahatihim, except concerning anyone that the messenger considered alayhi salatu salam that it was the welfare of the Muslims and the welfare of Islam to make a treaty with them. لِمُدَّةٍ مُعَيَّنَةٍ لَا لِلْأَبَدْ For a limited time, not unlimited. Not an unlimited treaty. لِذَلِكَ قَالَ الْعُلَمَاءِ For that reason, the scholar said, يُسْتَحَبُّ تَجْدِيدُ الدَّعْوَةِ بِلَا إِيجَابٍ Amam al qital. For that reason, the scholars said it's recommended to renew the call without that being obligatory before fighting. Uh, some kuffar would dispraise Islam for uh, jihad being a part of Islam, spreading Islam through warfare. Uh, those same kuffar are the ones who praise spreading democracy through warfare. And they champion their armies who go into, especially Muslim countries, to spread democracy. But they would dispraise Muslims for spreading Islam by warfare. And also, we're not going to be the cowards who deny that Islam is sometimes spread through warfare. That's true. That's true. When you're on the truth, then these things, you can't let those things, you can't be reluctant and scared. All you need to do is learn the proofs. Don't be a fool and say stuff in the wrong place. Like... Stand up in your classroom and say, oh, we Muslims, we just, we can spread Islam by fighting sometimes. That's not, maybe not wise for you to do, even though it's true. And don't be a coward. Then when somebody challenges you, then you buckle and you lie. Say, no, no, we only defend ourselves. Rather, what do you do? Like we already said, you learn the proofs. Learn the arguments. Don't make up arguments. Learn the proofs and the arguments. And learn the way to argue also. That helps. Then, I don't want to stick here too long, but then when those armies, those Muslim armies won and they took over a land, the people in those lands, really, they found their way of life, even if they didn't become Muslims. They found their way of life improved. And they found that their 
uh, that their financial situations improved when when they found that Islam doesn't institute taxes and if so when the Muslims came remove all their taxes whoa that's something big there I'd love to see what's going to happen when the Mahdi comes I'm curious if non-Muslims are going to try to go to the Muslim lands to get away from taxes and maybe get some slaves too So, فقد روى البخاري ومسلم أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم قاتل بني المصطلق. البخاري مسلم narrated that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم fought, waged war on the clan of المصطلق. وهم غارون أي لا علم لهم يعني he ambushed them. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he ambushed them. They were unaware. فَقَتَلَ مُقَاتِلَتَهُمْ وَسَبَى نِسَاءَهُمْ وَذَرَارِيَّهُمْ He fought, he killed their fighters and he captured their women and children. فَلَوْ كَانَ يُشْتَرَطُ لِجَوَازِ مُقَاتَلَةِ الْكُفَّارِ أَنْ يُعْطَوْ مُهْلَةً لِلْتَفْكِيرِ فِي صِحَّةِ الْإِسْلَامِ so, had it been a condition for the permission to fight the blasphemers, to give them time to think about the validity of Islam, and its rightfulness, then the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would have been the best to practice that. لَكِنَّهُ لَمْ يَكُنْ يُمْهِلُهُمْ بُرْهَةً لِلْتَفْكِيرِ However, he did not used to delay them for some time to think. بَلْ اِكْتَفَى لِقِتَالِهِمْ بِأَنَّهُ كَانَ بَلَّغَهُمْ قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ أَصْلَ الدَّعْوَةِ Rather, he sufficed, يعني, he deemed it sufficient to fight them that he had already delivered the message to them. The message of the basic call. And uh, it reached me that this spot right here in the Bughya, some of the sheikhs were concerned and they asked the sheikh, should we omit it? He said, no, don't omit it. Leave it. فَذَلِكَ دَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ مَنْ سَمِعَ فِي الْآذَانِ شَهَادَتَيْنِ وَهُوَ يَفْهَمُ الْعَرَبِيَّةَ فَهُوَ مُكَلَّفْ So that is evidence that whoever heard the adhan, whoever heard in the adhan, the two shahadas, while understanding Arabic, is accountable. فَإِنْ مَاتَ وَلَمْ يُسْلِمْ if this one died without embracing Islam, then he is deserving of the torture of Allah, the perpetual torture of Allah in the fire with a capital F. And by the way, I hope you're taking notes. Please take notes and don't rely on the recordings. Take notes, huh? Subhanallah wa bihamdi. At least something you jot down. If you're not writing the whole lesson word for word, some important points for yourself, write them down. وَلَا يَحْسُلُ شُكْرُ الْمُنْعِمِ الْخَالِقِ إِلَّا بِالْإِسْلَامِ Yeah, because for example, if you're someone who wants to memorize your knowledge, then write. That's going to be easier for you to memorize than... Your recording. Because you're going to write it on a page and then you're going to open up to that page. You have it right there. And you can keep it there and you can just fold that page and put it in your pocket, for example, and just open it. It's there. When you're dealing with recording, that means you have to have device for that. Maybe you need to have headphones for that. Means you have to have battery power for that. Means you have to be somewhere where you're able to turn the machine on for example, then you might have to even just find the spot you're looking for in the recording. Is it to mention the part, so this is a proof that whoever heard the two shahadas, mm. again, please. Yes. 
He says, فَذَلِكَ دَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ مَنْ سَمِعَ فِي الْأَذَانِ شَهَادَتَيْنِ So that is evidence that whoever heard in the Adhan, the two shahadas, يعني, whoever heard the two shahadas in the Adhan, وَهُوَ يَفْهَمُ الْعَرَبِيَّةِ While understanding Arabic, فَهُوَ مُكَلَّفِ Then this one is accountable. فَإِنْ مَاتَ وَلَمْ يُسْلِمْ if he died without embracing Islam, then he will deserve the perpetual torture of Allah in the fire. And thanking the endowing creator would not happen but by islam a ifradihi bil ibadah meaning by singling god out for worship without anyone else wal imani bir rasul alladhi arsalahu liyuallima an-nasa ma yuhibbu allah wa ma yakrahu allah and by believing in the messenger who was sent to teach the people what is accepted to Allah and what is unaccepted. وَلَا يَحْصُلُ شُكْرُ الْمُنْعِمِ الْخَالِقِ بِغَيْرِ ذَلِكِ And thanking the endowing creator does not occur by any other means. مِنْ إِطْعَامِ الْمَسَاكِينَ وَإِغَافَةِ الْمَكْرُوبِينَ وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكِ whether it were feeding the poor or assisting the troubled and the likes of that, none of that is acceptable. That's not thanking Allah. ثُمَّ إِنَّ نِيَّةَ الثُّبُوتِ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ ضَرُورِيَّةِ Furthermore, the intention of steadfastness upon Islam is necessary. Indispensable. A. أن يخلو قلبه عن أي عزم على ترك الإسلام في المستقبل أو تردد. Meaning, for one's heart to be devoid of any decision to leave Islam in the future, أو تردد في ذلك or for the heart to have even any uh, hesitance, uh, hesitation about that, have any hesitation about that. فَإِنَّ مَنْ نَوَى الْكُفْرَ فِي الْمُسْتَقْبَلِ كَفَرَ فِي الْحَالِ For indeed, whoever intended to blaspheme in the future, blasphemed immediately. We have a footnote here. قال الشيخ زكريا الأنصاري في شرح الروض في باب الردة أو عزم على الكفر أو علقه بشيء. Okay, this is something we already learned. It's in the Mukhtasar. It's coming. We don't have to read that now. Uh, although, just one thing I want to point out to you here, Sheikh. He said Noah في المستقبل. Noah في المستقبل. He intended in the future. So, as if he means عزم. Azama here. Here he said, Azama fil mustaqbal. Yes, because remember, according to a Shafi'i, there is something called niya, which we're usually translating as intention, and something called azum. I usually translate that now as decision, a decision. So according to a Shafi'i, the niya, intention, that's what you do. When you commence a deed, at the time of doing the deed, not before. And the azm is what you do before the deed, the decision. Meaning, you decide, when, when you decide to do something, that means you're going to do it. I'm translating, I'm using the word azm here. When I'm using the word decide to mean azm here. According to that meaning, when you decide to do something, that's not doing it now. That's what you're going to do in the future. That's not valid for the worships, according to a Shafi'i. The decision to make wudu 
is not a valid intention. It's not a valid niyyah, according to Ash-Shafi'i. And the decision to pray, for example, that's not valid. Because the niyyah, according to Ash-Shafi'i, is what you do when you commence the deed, not before. And the azm is what you do before the deed. Here, Shaykh said, Nawa fil mustaqbal. So as if he's using the word Noah here to mean Azama, he decided. So, فَإِنَّ مَنْ نَوَى الْكُفْرَ فِي الْمُسْتَقْبَلِ For indeed, whoever has decided to blaspheme in the future, كَفَرَ فِي الْحَالِ Then he has blasphemed in the present. يعني immediately. قَالَ الْمُؤَلِّفُ رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهِ Said the author, may Allah have mercy upon him. فَمِمَّا يَجِبُ عِلْمُهُ وَعَتِقَادُهُ مُطْلَقًا And so, among what is obligatory to know and to hold as a conviction, absolutely. وَالنُّطْقُ بِهِ فِي الْحَالِ And among what is obligatory to pronounce immediately in كَانَ kafira, If one were a blasphemer, a disbeliever, if he was not, if he were not a disbeliever, then it's not obligatory on him to say it immediately. Rather, it would be obligatory on him, the one who's already a believer, to say the shahada in his prayer. Or to say it in his prayer. What is that, which I just said slipped out, a shahadatan, the two shahadas. That's what's obligatory to know it and to have conviction in it immediately. And to pronounce immediately if one were a blasphemer or else if one were already a believer in his prayer, he has to pronounce it. What is it? The shahadatan, the two shahadas. Wahuma, and they are Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I testify or I bear witness. That no one is God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll remind you about that ha in the name of Allah. Don't drop it. Catch yourself, catch yourself. If you still have the habit of saying Allah without the ha, Allah, catch yourself and repeat. If you don't repeat it, if you have a habit of not saying the ha, but then you don't repeat it, then you're just going to stay in your habit. And that's haram. That's a sin. So you don't want to have the sin of perverting the name of Allah. And you love Allah. You don't want to see that on Judgment Day. May Allah protect us. I mean. And also the ha and Muhammad. Muhammad, don't pronounce that as a ha. Muhammad, don't say Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad. Mu, not ma. Mu, ha, not ha. Muhammad, it's not Muhammad, 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 sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ash-sharh, the explanation, anna awwala ma yajibu ala al-insani al-mukallafi ma'arifatu Allahi wa ma'arifatu rasulih, is that the first of what is obligatory on the human being, the accountable human being, is knowing Allah and knowing his messenger, وَالنُّطْقُ بِذَٰلِكَ مَرَّةً وَاحِدَةً إِنْ كَانَ كَافِرًا And pronouncing that once, if one were a blasphemer. وَمَنْ حَصَلَ مِنُّ ذَٰلِكَ مَعَ الْإِعْتِقَادِ الْجَازِمِ And anyone from whom this has occurred, while having a firm conviction, not shaky, not doubtful, فَهُوَ مُسْلِمٌ مُؤْمِنٌ Then that one is a believing Muslim. He is a Muslim. He is a submitter. In this case, going to have a capital S. And he's a believer. Capital B. He's a, a believing submitter to God's command, not God's will. A submitter to God's command. Not to God's will. Because everything is, is submitted to God's will. Everything is conquered by God's will. So you don't have to be a Muslim to be obeying God's will. 
The Muslim is the one who is accepting God's command, submitted to God's command, and he's a believer. Thumma la yakmulu imanuhu wa islamuhu illa bi adail wajibati wajitinabi al muharramat. Furthermore, one's faith and his Islam, the faith of his heart and his practice of his religion, the faith of his heart and his religious practice will not be perfected. It won't be excellent, except by fulfilling the obligations and refraining from the prohibitions. ثُمَّ اخْتَلَفَ الْعُلَمَاءُ فِي وُجُوبِ النُّطْقِ بِالشَّهَادَتَيْنِ بَعْدَ الْمَرَّةِ Furthermore, the scholars have differed about the obligation of pronouncing the two shahadas after that first time. وَأَكْثَرُ الْعُلَمَاءِ عَلَى وُجُوبِ النُّطْقِ بِالشَّهَادَتَيْنِ فِي كُلِّ الصَّلَاةِ Most of the scholars are of the position that it's obligatory to pronounce that shahadatain in every prayer. وَقَالَ مَالِكٌ فِي أَحَدِ قَوْلَيْهِ بِعَدَمِ وُجُوبِ النُّطْقِ بِالشَّهَادَتَيْنِ Salah and Imam Malik, he said that according to one of his two sayings, he has two sayings about the issue, two different sayings. One of those two sayings is that it is not obligatory to pronounce the two shahadas in the prayer. Because the tashahud in the prayer, according to him, is recommended. ليس فرض من فروض الصلاة. It's not an obligation of the prayer, according to him. أي على الراجح المشهور في المذهب. Meaning, according to the weighty saying, the weighty famous saying in the Maliki school. That's not the weak saying. The weaker saying in the Maliki school is that it is obligatory to say تشهد. Stronger saying in Maliki school that it's not. Let's stop here. Huh? I don't want to uh, try to squeeze this.